Hello designers, what is up? I am in Poland for Product Camp 2019. Product Camp is a big conference as you might have guessed about product design and building great product. I'm here for two reasons. One of them in two days, I'll be talking here about how I use Webflow for product prototyping. But today I'm just gonna go and see all the talks in the conference. There's a lot of great talks about UX, product strategy, a lot of really, really interesting things. So basically, I just wanna learn as much as possible today and get to know some interesting people. Hope this will be really awesome. I've never been to this part of Poland before, so I'm really excited to learn and share those learnings with you. Let's go. All right, so I have just came back from the first day. It was a great first day. As always, took kind of my notebook here to take notes from the talks that I like. I wanna share a little bit of kind of my insights and, and what I learned today. So here it is. So first talk of the day was by Jeff Patton, who is kind of a, a veteran in the industry of product management. And he have seen actually a, more than 30 years of product development and really seen how things were done back in the day and how they are done today. And I think it's really, really interesting. You know, a lot of the tech industry are young people who just got into it and there's a lot of kind of acceptable way of doing things. So hearing from somebody who has a little bit of perspective and actually shared a lot of the history of how product design uh, was done gives you a, a lot of context and, and a lot of valuable insight. So first of all, one of the cool things was that Jeff actually did not bring in uh, many slides. He actually had this kind of a projector and he actually wrote his own slides, which I thought was a really interesting way to give a talk, kind of like old fashioned, but really, really cool and interactive. He actually kind of asked the, the audience some question and then wrote it on the slides. I thought that was pretty cool. And one of the takeaways kind of that he shared, which I thought were really, really insightful is that you know, when we're working on products and trying to build awesome products, we have tons of ideas and that's that can actually be a dangerous thing because we have too many ideas and we actually get lost in trying to figure out which is the best idea. Now, the second thing about it is that most of our ideas for products actually suck, right? So the, the average fail rate of startups is above 90%. And so most of our ideas are bad and the, the hard thing about designing products is actually knowing what is the good idea. And that's why kind of over the years, lean kind of the lean uh, way of product development, kind of like testing and iterating fast became very, um, very, very dominant. And that's kind of like the, the trend that he's seeing that you have to iterate as fast as possible all the time because most ideas fail and the faster that you can iterate on your ideas, um, that's that increases your chance for, for survival. So I think that was very, very, um, interesting. The second talk was from um, actually Clementine and um, uh, Clementine and Wilma from Zalando. It's kind of a fashion um, online um, e-commerce platform. And they were talking about how you can personalize the, the user experience. Um, so based on things like what you have browsed in the past or something like the weather or all sorts of things that we can know that happened to you, we can create an experience that is personal to you. Um, for example, we see that it's cold where you are today. Would you like to browse some, um, you know, some coats and based on your past uh, browsing, those might be the, the best one for you. So giving a, a personalized experience can really increase um, you know, the conversion rate and how people are happy with the experience because it's really, really relevant to them. But one thing to be very careful about is that you need not to be creepy because people might be worried, like, how do you know this about me? How do you know my name? How do you know where I'm from? So when you're designing a personalized experience, it's really important to be transparent about trying to personalize the experience and give context to where, you know, how do you know those things about here? So the, in the example that they showed, they say, hey, you know, we know where you are based on where you shipped your, your last order. So we're not like tracking your, your IP or something like that. So that's really an interesting insight that 
personalizing the experience can really improve user experience. Then again, it can also be creepy, so you need to be careful about how you do that. The next talk that I like was from uh, two guys working in, in Lego, forgot their names at the moment, but um, they were sharing how they've implemented design thinking over in, not design thinking, sorry, design sprints over in Lego. So Lego, because it's an old company, they had a kind of an old way of doing things and they try to renovate or innovate the way that the um, that they work there. So they actually took time off for two months just to rethink their processes and, and they found out about the design sprint, started to implement it there. And obviously I'm a, a big fan of design sprints, but what was interesting about what they say is that once they've implemented design sprint in their organization, once they've mastered it, when they really were good at, they could actually start to change the process and kind of like build it for, you know, they had new ideas on how to improve it. And so they kind of adjusted it into their own specific needs in Lego. And I think this is a really interesting insight that, you know, first, when you learn a new skill, it doesn't have to be perfect for you, but once you master it, once you know how to run a process, then you can start adjusting it. And then at the end, maybe it's very far from the original idea, but you took it, you mastered it, and now you can adjust it and end up in a totally different place place, but something that might be very, very useful um, for you. The last talk that um, I saw that day or that was uh, meaningful to me was from uh, a guy called Itamar Gilad. He's actually also um, an Israeli, but he's he's now based in Barcelona, and he you, he worked in um, he worked in, on Google in on both Gmail and YouTube. Now he's a consultant, and he's um, talking a lot about product strategy. And one of the um, interesting things that he said was that you need to divide your time um, based on are you thinking about strategies to you know, improve the core thing that you're doing at the moment or maybe uh, adjunct businesses to what you're doing at the moment or you're trying radical new stuff that's going to transform your business. And thinking about that, like how far out are your ideas, how transformational they are is really interesting. and you can really think about like if you have a business that's going well right now if your product is already working well you can spend you know maybe um 80 percent or 70 percent working on that and only 20 percent working on adjunct ideas and 10 percent on transformational ideas and that's basically what he said that they used to do in google but if you're if you feel like your product or service or something is kind of like failing or it's kind of like reaching the end, then maybe you want to spend more time on the transformative ideas. This is, I think, is also kind of like, I think product strategy is something really important that not a lot of designers are aware about, uh, of how to think about this. And basically, the way that he framed it, he says that a strategy is basically an hypothesis. You think that this thing might work. Um, and, and so you bring a few of those hypotheses and then you make experiments to try them. So you try them out, some of them will work, some of them will not work. So one example that he brought from Apple was that at, they had kind of an experience about multi-touch and that experience actually failed. And then they had another experience uh, experiment trying to um, turn the iPad, iPod, the original iPod into a phone that also failed. But then again, they tried something in the middle, combining the multi-touch and an iPod to invent the iPhone, which ended up working really, really well. So that, that was kind of an interesting idea how to think about product strategy. Now, one of the great things about going to a conference is actually meeting the people and hanging out with them. And I've, I've reached out to, to some of the other speakers during uh, the lunch break, kind of hang out with them and ate lunch together, which actually felt a little bit kind of like uncomfortable just reaching out to new people. It's always a little bit awkward, but um, you know, after a few minutes we had lunch together and it was really, really fun getting to know them personally a little bit beyond what they just gave in the talk. I think this is kind of like one of the best things actually about going to these conference is that you actually get to meet the people. And w one more thing that it's kind of a, I don't know if it's a hack, but I actually think that it's a win-win. So during Itamar's talk, I took a photo of him and then I posted it on Twitter and tagged him. I always like doing this because I think, you know, as somebody who speaks at events, I know that <laughs> what you want to get <laughs> when you finish the talk is actually getting your photo of giving the talk and then maybe posting it. And if somebody else does it for you, that really looks great. So I think that tagging him and tagging the organizers of the event is always something that's win for everybody and a lot of times they they appreciate you doing that and it helps build the relationship between you obviously you have to do it genuinely if you think that 
what they're talking about is interesting. But for me, that's kind of a, something that I learned over the years of doing that people really appreciate um, when you're doing this and, and it helps build a, a relationship. So that's that's one of, of the other things. I'm gonna take, take a few hours now to chill and, and work on my presentation for the upcoming days. Then this evening, we're actually gonna go out for a dinner. So looking forward for that. <laughs> All right, it is way past my bedtime. This dinner was really, really fun, you know, meeting people.